Detailing on the fuselage is almost done, so it's time to start on the wing. Time to start looking at uh, things like panel lines and inspection covers. Simulate the slats. I'm not actually be making slats. Simulate that. More covers. Panel lines. Rivets. I, I don't think I'm going to do rivets on this one, but I am going to do panel lines. And in order to get the right location of the inspection hatches, first I want to go ahead and get the panel lines in because I'll use those as reference, reference marks. This is a 148 scale uh, three view. And I measured from this join uh, line, it's a fairing on the real airplane. I've simulated it uh, by adding blue tape here. So I measured from there out to the end of the wingtip. Measured three inches and six hundred and five thousandths of an inch. And I measured the wing from the blue tape to the end. And I, that measured out to thirty inches and thirteen thirty seconds of an inch. So <clears throat> taking the wingspan 30 inches, 13 and 13, 30 seconds of an inch. Dividing that by this three inches, 605 thousandths of an inch gives us a scale factor of 8.43. So I'm gonna put 8.43 into the memory here. Now, at this point, I just start measuring for the panel lines. And I've kind of already done this off camera to save a little bit of time, but uh, I, I measured in this example, this ends up being uh, 544 thousandths of an inch. 544 thousandths of an inch times the scale factor of 8.43 is 4 and 586 thousandths of an inch. So I come out here 4, 000, or 4 inches. 586 thousandths of an inch. I marked it and it's right here. And I just made a little tick mark here. I didn't actually draw off the line. Then I came over here from the end of the wingtip and I didn't actually measure this and I just kind of drew the line in from the end of the aileron up here to the wing. I just drew that line in. And then this, from that reference, it looks like about 585 thousandths of an inch. So 585 times recall, 4 inches, 932 inches. And we got right here, and I have my tick mark right here. So I just did the same thing. Except now, I, I didn't want to go out this way because any air would probably be accumulative, and then this last panel line might be like way off somewhere. So I did one in, one in, two in, two in, and then the last one, I just, I just took this measurement right here and marked the lines, um, and that looked, uh, looked about right. Now the thing about this is, not only do I put a tick mark down, but I also kind of look to see how it is in relation to the flap. That looks about right. This panel line on the aileron, it looks about right. Anyway, so I did that for all of the panel lines. Line it up, and I'm gonna try to make it as parallel to the next line as possible. In this case, that looks like about five inches. Coming up here, it's about five inches. Use a fine tip ink pen for this and I'm just drawing a line here just 
because I just want to use these lines as reference points for my hatches. I actually enjoyed this. Uh, I know probably a lot of people don't, a lot of modelers don't, uh, but I do. All right, so now, with these panel lines kind of give me a good reference point, I'm gonna start measuring for these inspection hatches. I'm gonna use aluminum tape. Scale factor is used to determine the size of the covers in the same manner as it was done to determine the panel lines. All right, I've cut out the uh, four aluminum circles. This one was a little bit smaller. Um, went ahead and put them on. The next thing I did was I drew out the slat. Now, I'm not gonna put this in tape, but I will use a panel line to kind of show there's a slat there. There is a latch here. I went ahead and did that latch in aluminum tape that I added. There's sort of a simulated little latch there. I took a uh, panel line tool for plastic kits and just kind of scribed a little bit of a latch there. Just for looks, just kind of break it up a little bit. finish up the top wing, both of those uh, styrene panels, they need a simulated hinge. With the simulated hinge, I'm using uh, one mm, or I think it's 40 thousandths of an inch, half round. The larger styrene sheet that you see that's simulating the machine gun cover was later removed. You'll see why further down the road. And then to actually make it kind of look like a hinge, we will we'll just make some marks. So I'm going to go about every 2 mm on this and just Just cut in some, some grooves. I'm just using some Tamiya panel line, black accent color. I just want to use a little bit of this just to kind of give you the idea. And it gives you a kind of a hinge look. Before I got too much further along with the uh, detailing on the bottom of the wing, I think I need to go ahead and open up my gear well again. I three view the gear door here. I just made a blown up photocopy of that. So I know my center is right about here somewhere, so I'm just going to start here and sort of work my way up this way.
so I got almost all of that quarter ply out, not quite all of it. Almost all of it back here. I had to actually move this out a little bit away. I see that move it out a little bit away from the uh, mount so that I could get my reach right in. It has to kind of go down and in and then slide and then slide back like so. good it spins so no rubbing the next thing I wanted to work on which is a rather prominent feature of the underside is the machine gun magazine blister I intend to make these out of uh, a thin fiberglass I want them to be as light as possible. How to get started on that. Uh, the first thing I did was I took my three view and I blew up the blister. What I want is the inside portion here. There's an inside and this area right here is the actual blister part and then the outer is the flange that sits flat against the wing. I'm going to cut out just the inside Then we're going to make a foam plug. Applying joint compound to create a smooth surface. What I'm going to do is lay up fiberglass part here. I'm going to do it right on the wing where the blister is supposed to go. I've already put down three strips of packing tape. This will act as a barrier to protect the wing. And what I'm going to use is uh, two five ounce layers of cloth cut on a 45. I need just a little bit to lay flat on the wing because I'll be including the flange that goes with the blister as part of this layup. I want to reuse this form for both wings. Gotten into the habit of using Vaseline uh, to protect the form. A little thin layer. I'm going to put just a little bit around the bottom edge. I really don't want the epoxy to get up underneath here if I can help it. Also, I believe the Vaseline on the bottom will kind of help make it grab a little bit through suction. See how that Vaseline helps to hold that fiberglass down? It doesn't want to move around as I blot with this brush. Initially, no new epoxy is added to the second layer. Instead, the epoxy from the first layer is pulled up into the second layer by using the brush. Only when there are white spots starting to show in the second layer, is a little bit of epoxy applied to those areas and worked in. The next day, and the first thing to remove is the peel block. I want to keep the form. 
torn in its location until this uh, resin completely cures, maybe a couple days. The Vaseline just really kind of sucks it down, holds it into position really well. Filling in a small pucker with epoxy and micro balloons. Sometimes a shot of compressed air helps to remove the part from the form. <laughs> 